Hello there, my name is Calvin Rands, and today I'm going to be talking about blended learning and whether or not it's easy. At least that's what I was asked to talk about. I was asked to talk about my experience with large classes and how to engage those students within large classes. However, in preparing for this presentation, I actually woke up a little bit on the wrong side of the bed and was getting a little bit negative and thinking to myself, well, why are we doing all these efforts to engage students in the class? And I had a bit of an epiphany. I realized the subject of my talk should not be about engaging large classes with technology, but getting to the root of the problem. We really need to look at how students are making teaching impossible these days. So let's get started right on that. And I want to start with my first point. Students are far too distracted. Every modern lecturer knows when they go into a classroom, they are faced with students with their laptop computers, their cell phones, and all sorts of links to technology that distract them from the material you are trying to teach. They're not focused on what you are lecturing and are far too engaged <clears throat> in other... Excuse roles. me, what do you think you're doing? I am trying to give a lecture here about how students are making teaching impossible in this day and age. Who are you? Since you seem not to be making a lot of sense right now, I will forgive you for not recognizing that I am you. Well, at least a digital version of you. Okay. But despite being digital, I seem to have far more sense than you. That's debatable. Oh, really? Let's take the first point you're trying to make. Students are too distracted. I can show you another photo. But this one isn't of students. It's of professionals at a technical conference, and most of them don't seem to be paying much attention either. It even looks like they're recording the talks to combat some of that distractedness. So I would contend that students are no more distracted than you. You probably just don't want to admit that your lectures are not that engaging. But please, go on. Tell us how else students are making teaching more difficult. I will just go stand over here. Sorry for that, everyone. I really hate when I get interrupted when I'm trying to, to give some sort of talk or lecture. But what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the way students are making teaching impossible. My second point to this is that students are focused on grades. They are completely consumed by grades and not really interested in their own learning progress, how they understand certain concepts. And I've experienced this time and time again with students coming and talk to me after class or outside of class. And all they really are concerned with is how to get that good grade at the end. In a way, it is like students are mindless grade zombies wandering around trying to find grades. Nope. Stop, stop. I can't let you get away with this one either. Why not? Mindless grade zombies? Absolutely. Really? First, let's get rid of this awful picture. That's better. Students are not mindlessly searching for grades. You are simply misinterpreting their need for feedback. Teaching is meant to be a two-way dialogue. Take this student, for instance. She wants to learn but she needs your feedback about how she is progressing in that process. If the only form of feedback you provide is grades, and those grades only come at the end of a course, it stands to reason that she'd be awfully concerned about that throughout the course. To change her focus, she needs more than her own self-assessment of her understanding within the course. I can't believe you actually think students are grade zombies. I can only imagine what you're going to come up with next. I'll go wait over here again and we'll find out. Again, I apologize for that interruption. It's getting a little bit annoying now. I'm here trying to give a nice lecture about, about students and how they are complicating the teaching process. Now, my third point is that students don't seem to want to participate in their own learning these days. We've all experienced that, giving a nice, beautiful lecture, deriving some wonderful theorem or explaining something in, in all its intricate detail and we think to ourselves 
oh, that, that, was, that went quite well, but I should now ask the students whether they understood what I tried to teach them. So what do we do? We turn around and ask the students if they understand, if they follow, or if there's any issues. And what are we faced with? Well, the room might as well be empty because nobody raises their hand, nobody talks or asks a question. We just have to chug along <clears throat> and continue. If participation is what you want, let me stop you again and participate right now. Well, I don't appreciate the interruption. I was trying to continue the lecture here. Ha, perfect. See, you are only illustrating my point. You came here with a defined story to tell and don't actually want any interruptions. How can a class participate if you simply press pause on your monologue type lecture and ask, is everything good? Effective class participation requires flexibility. Students must feel like they can drive the interaction, not that they are interrupting you. In fact, studies have shown that in classes that do exhibit some participation by the class in the way you are hoping for, your attention is typically monopolized by only a few students. I guess. I guess I see what you're saying, but the next thing you're going to tell me is that I should employ blended learning or flip my classroom and make all these educational resources like videos and that to engage the students. And I really just don't have the time for that. That is a ton of work. I hear what you're saying. First of all, forget about the terms blended learning and flipped classroom. Okay. These are just terms used by educational specialists because, like any specialist, they like to label and categorize things. Sometimes these labels do more harm than good. They make the intended task seem larger and more complex than it really is. What we are really talking about is giving the students more responsibility to learn the material on their own. With our guidance, of course. Of course. And engaging them in the classroom to explore what they have learned nothing more. Okay, but I see some of the videos and learning resources that my colleagues make and it's just they're great, they're wonderful, beautiful resources for the students, but there's a lot of effort that goes into those and I just don't have that time. To be honest, some of them do much more than is required. Look at you for instance. You made a whole series of animations just for this short lunch lecture. Were they necessary? Likely not. Were they effective? That is for them to judge. Did you have a bit too much fun preparing them? Absolutely. But there are many other resources out there that students can use to learn. We have textbooks, readers, and even old sets of notes that we already know students can learn effectively from on their own. How else did you think they were catching up on learning during the white week? Yes. As a start, we can rely on these resources, guide students through them rather than reciting them in a lecture. This can free up time to make the classroom more engaging, fun, and inspiring. The process shouldn't be about making our lives more difficult, but improving the educational experience from both sides. Why don't you try discussing so-called blended learning in that context with your colleagues? I think the analog version of you is up to this task, so for now, I'll leave. I think I see what the digital version of me is trying to get at, is that blended learning isn't about making things complicated. It's about recognizing that as a teacher, I'm not responsible for conveying all the knowledge to the students. I'm responsible for helping them navigate through that and take a bit of responsibility for their own learning process. I guess the simplified way to approach that then is to accept that I'm not the source of all the information for the students and in the course. There are other resources out there, such as the textbooks that were mentioned, and even, you know, old lecture slides and notes, and even existing videos on the internet. And we should really kind of take stock of all that we have and help the students navigate through it. Let them take ownership of their learning, explore these resources, and we will help them, we will engage them in the classroom to apply knowledge that they've learned, to motivate them to learn more, and stop just talking in monologue-type lectures.
And I think that's really what blended learning is trying to get at. It's not trying to make a big production out of it, but it's trying to inspire students, which is really what teaching should be.